Hi there! If you don't already know me, this is my channel Shy's Designs and I'm Cheyenne. I'm a new wife and a new mom. I'm here to breathe life back into furniture and make beautiful pieces affordable again. Let's get started! To open up this next video, we have a blue cabinet here. I picked this piece up for $50 off Facebook Marketplace. I could see this piece's potential already, so I was excited to see how it would turn out. Let's see how it went, shall we? To start flipping this piece, I first used crud cutter to give it a good, nice washing up. Next, I removed the glass inserts and the window dividers. That was quite fun. After that, I removed the hardware. I reused this hardware exactly the way they were, so I just tossed them in a container until I was ready to put them back on the piece. Then, with some DAP plastic wood filler, I filled any holes I may have seen while washing this piece. I started with filling the small ones I saw around the piece and repaired the damaged corner on the back right side. Then I proceeded to fill the half moon holes the window dividers left. Now onto sanding. I used a 220 grit sandpaper just to smooth out the filler and also end up with an even surface since the areas were so concentrated. Now onto priming. I primed this guy because it gave my paint the maximum hold to the surface. Also, the wood filler I used has wood particles in it, and I have had bleed through of the tannins before and I didn't want to risk it. So, awesome tip here. If you're still having bleed through, then you can use spray paint on the area. As you can see, the wood filler did bleed through. Spray paint is usually an all-in-one. A light coat will do the trick and you can paint right over it. Next, do a light sanding with 400 grit sandpaper to knock back any debris or raised areas you can feel. This gives the smoothest base for your paint finish. Now onto painting. First, I started with my sprayer and I mixed Bear Marque Lunar Surface Paint, my Chalk Teak Transformer, and a little bit of water to get my 35 seconds full pass through with my viscosity measure. It is the sweet spot for an even beautiful layer of paint. I started with my doors and shelf with my sprayer and that went on gorgeously. But once I brought the cabinet over to paint, the sprayer starts having difficulties, as you can see in the video. I didn't really have the patience at the time to try and make it work for me, so I made a switch. I like this brush, I never get any hairs in my paint, and the handle is flexible which makes holding it very comfortable. I will link it in my description. The roller is your standard microfiber roller that is made for medium surface which means that it'll get into crevices without having to try too hard. Making the switch definitely added to my time spent painting by about an hour and a half because I had to do multiple coats, but it wasn't a big deal. It was pretty therapeutic. After painting was done and dry, I put my backing back on first. Then, for some reason, as you can see, I couldn't work out in my head which way this hinge needed to go. So, I switched it around twice before I ended up putting it on the door, which is probably where I should have started in the first place. Then, I proceeded with the rest of the hardware. The pools and the shelf were a bit premature since I didn't have the top coat on yet, but I just ended up taking them off again and putting them back on after the top coat dried. I use Verithane water-based top coat matte finish. Next huge tip of mine, I use a roller to apply my top coat. 
Yes, a roller. Because I truly hate applying with a foam brush or spraying it on because spraying it obviously did not work for me based on the last video. So here's my full rolling top coat experience. I apply a medium layer of top coat all over the area I'm starting with. Then lighter and lighter I roll over that same area until I have a completely smooth surface. My bubbles are no more and I have an even gorgeous finish I'm very happy about. It makes quick work of my application and this top coat is fast drying so it doesn't take too many rollovers to really get those bubbles gone. After my top coat is dry, I then start measuring for the length and width of my cane pieces. I do the cane last because anything getting onto your cane can affect its natural life cycle, so I don't risk it. Next, I cut my pieces to size with some sharp scissors and then throw them into a bathtub for about 30 minutes so that it's easier to work with. And if you wet your cane first, you get a much more taut and professional finish when you're done, which is what you want when it comes to cane. Then I proceeded to apply my cane with the smallest staples my staple gun will hold. I made quick work of that and then cut off any excess cane. I threw those pulls back on and then, voila! This piece turned out exactly how I imagined and I love it. Like I said in the beginning, I spent $58 on this piece. On my Lunar Surface Bear Paint, I spent $5. I spent about $15 on the cane that I used, and the Chalk Teak and the Top Coat are bulk items which I will explain how I calculate those in a later video. But for now, I reused the hardware exactly the way they came, so no expense on that part. So that brings my total out to $70. I got to post this piece for $250 based on the popularity of the cane and the piece. And a few days later, I got an offer of $225 and I accepted. Spending a total of $70 on this piece and selling it for $225 makes my profit $155, you guys. That and me spending only one full working day on this guy is amazing. $155 for one day of work. Awesome. I'd say that is a great turnout. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and coming on yet another adventure. If you enjoyed this video or happen to learn something, leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. I post every Sunday. See you then? Let's try this again. Maybe a little bit close. Overheating. What? <laughs>